City Council joint regular committee meeting Thursday, July 20th at 6 p.m. Uh, public participation. Is there any public participation? No? Okay. Uh, order of committee business. Uh, service committee will start at 6 o'clock as well. Um, it's waterline rules and ordinances. Uh, it was referred to the service committee. Uh, it's uh, extension procedures for water lines 914.01. Uh, who would like to speak first to this? Mr. Wagner or? Uh, well, I think, uh, I think I'd rather refer to Lynn first. Okay. Um, as we have a request to use some water line. Sure. And the soapbox can be as long as you like. Order supper. <laughs> Name and address, then. Lynn McKeever, 930 South Walnut. Uh, Engineer McKeever and Associates. Uh, thank you, members of the council administration. Uh, basically, we've had some discussions in the past on water line extensions uh, outside the city limits. Uh, I both have had issues dealing with the county commissioners on their county sanitary engineer and oversee their water as well as wastewater plants and also represent some developers who desire to have services outside the city limits and uh, discussing the best alternative to get those services. Uh, as far as the county goes, we have a, the county commissioners have a contract with the city of the SARS for up to 250,000 gallons a day, which is fine and that covers our line going to North Robinson and anywhere else that we would deem necessary to run that and then connect to the city system, all in accordance with your own rules and regulations and we pay the fees that we've agreed to and so forth. That's fine. Um, in looking at this from a broader picture, it's my opinion that it would be more beneficial for the city to expand their service area outside the current city limits in lieu of having you know the county uh, grow their department, of which I'm the head of. Um, one of the reasons is everywhere that the county system would have to connect to the city system, we will be required to have a backflow device and a master water meter that we would pay for our, uh, the water usage based on those readings, just like we do presently at, uh, on the east side of town with the line going to North Robinson. Based on the size of the service and where we're at, those could be $50,000 each. Uh, and I would prefer to see that $50,000 put to pipelines in lieu of metering devices and so forth. But in order for that to happen, that water line would have to be under the city's control, not the county's. Because as a county purveyor of water, we are a satellite water distribution system under EPA's criteria, which says that we've got to jump through hoops. We have to do some of the same testing that you guys do and it and with your water and we don't touch the water that gets sent to us it's all coming from your system and if that was your water line you wouldn't have to do that additional testing so you would just fit into your normal market uh, area and the testing for your, your service area so that's you know that's the good thing about that, and it would be simpler. Uh, the, the other situation that I would like to bring your attention is there's an ordinance uh, you have where basically if you have a fire hydrant inside the city, it has to be serviced by an 8-inch water main. Uh, that ordinance has been in there as long as I can remember back into the 80s when I worked for you. Uh, the 
EPA has a criteria of a minimum with a fire hydrant being six inches in diameter. One of the reasons you, the city implemented the eight inch at that time was your pressure. Uh, prior to when that ordinance was uh, written, your water towers were 23 feet lower in elevation. Uh, in the 80s, the two new water towers were built and they were elevated 23.1 feet basically to get 10 pounds pressure more up into the air. So now you have more pressure in your distribution system which increases flows. Uh, a second reason to consider smaller uh, distribution system is a, you treat uh, for bacteria with chlorine. Chlorine reacts with the organics in your water system and that's common with all surface water systems which you are. Uh, it, the longer the water lays in the distribution system, we call it aging, basically, it's just common sense, big pipes, a little use, but lay there a while. Uh, that trihalomethanes and halocetic acids, those numbers rise, and as a cancer-causing agent, uh, we have a limitation of how high those can go before we have to do something else with treatment in the systems. Uh, it's becoming a, a major issue in a lot of communities who are bumping up against the upper thresholds of those. Uh, I'm happy to say your new plant has an additional treatment that's going to help lower that, which will, will be better. But that's just another issue, and we actually do modeling on distribution systems and put the demands in and do all our fancy gyrations in the computer, and it comes out color coding our water lines based on the age and the potential risk that we have in, in the water distribution system. So, you know, all those things come into play. And then also, uh, right now is, if we have to extend those lines and the sizes outside the city limits, um, the idea is to design the diameter based on the need, uh, projected needs and long range needs, and not fire protection. Uh, they'll be serviced by the township fire departments outside. They're all set up with mutual aids and tankers and uh, portable reservoirs. And uh, with that, then we can use a lot of smaller lines. You'll see the rural water people, three inch lines, four inch lines, six inch lines interconnecting between villages. Uh, I know Delco has got uh, about the, one of the bigger ones between Edison and I think coming north to Iberia is a six inch line, for instance, and it supplies those type of needs. Uh, I've done some calculations, and if in a pipe dream, if you wanted to send water to Nevada, a six inch line would suffice supplying the whole town of Nevada, and you could pick up Osceola and Foxfire campgrounds along the way. Uh, obviously, it's still an expense of getting there, but if we would design based on human consumption instead of the fire protection for those lines, it would be beneficial. Uh, I know communities have, uh, I'm just held out for uh, the annexation uh, to get those services. Uh, and you'll find in Cardington, they're now surrounded by Delco water, so there's no chance for them to grow that service. Uh, so, you have rural water, I believe, at a Cary Road, north on Route 4, it came to Tyro. Uh, you have rural water on uh, State Route 98, just south of the county line. Uh, you have rural water south of Galleon. It's actually just in the, the north side of uh, the Morrow County there, just south of Galleon. So it, they are, there are alternatives when they decide to come, and they'll run 60 miles or 120 miles a line to pick up those service areas like Northern Rural Water did with New Washington. They, they brought their water down from Sandusky to get there and they went around Attica and, and now they're servicing Chatfield, New Washington, Tyro. Uh, so, and a lot of that area, your reservoir was actually built to provide the raw water capacity for that northeast part of the county. Uh, 
don't need it now, but because they're bringing it in from Lake Erie. So that's some of the history that we had, and uh, we could pick up more customers. I believe the last I was told a few years ago that you've lost over 400 water customers due to the economy. Uh, at 30 bucks a customer, that's $144,000 a year less income to your water just your water system. Uh, being one of the people who helped pay for that, I would love to see another 100 people or be available to help divvy up the load. And uh, typically, if you maintain your one and a half uh, on the multiplier for the utility bill. Uh, that would be fine. I mean, they're going to pay one and a half for the same gallon of water that I pay one. You know, so uh, they're actually would help out. And I just know that there are, from talking with people in the surrounding perimeter of the immediate city here, that uh, there are people very interested in obtaining your services. And you know, the Mount Zion Road area, uh, they they've got problems. Uh, you could go out. Uh, to where 19 and 100 divide off out to that area of Crestline Road. Uh, the people up Stetzer Road, uh, there's some really nice homes up there and they're using pond water uh, for treatment or, or treating it to drink it. So, you know, it's, it's a need out there and we're going to have more of a need uh, hopefully within a year going northwest. And I know it's the, uh, there at uh, 19, Quaintons Road, or it's not Quaintons, it's Quaker. Quaker Road, yeah, thank you. Uh, in that area, we're working with the local industri commercial industry to uh, put some facilities in, and it would be beneficial to have water there, and you would have a, a large enough purchaser to uh, make it worth a while, that type of thing, and I know the commissioners are looking at ways to see if they can make that, help make that happen, and so. You know, that's why I'm here today is, would you consider it? Uh, if you would, can we work out something that makes it economical to extend it without big lines and fire Questions? So, uh, water line, like you said, maybe as far as, as the data, it would be strictly just drinking water, it wouldn't be for a hybrid use at all? I mean, and what I'm saying, what I'm getting at, it would be six inch then, you suspect? If we put a six inch line to Nevada, okay. or stop at Osceola, let's keep it okay. there, that uh, you could have a fire hydrant. Now typically, if you see the Winford water line, when that was put in, we, we, that was a 12 inch line, because they wanted it for the fire protection after they had the fire. So it was designed to meet that criteria. They can have a thousand gallons a minute out of that fire hydrant. And we only put fire hydrants going out on top of the hills to bleed off the air. Because if you have a, a hump in your line, you need to get the air out, or the pumps won't be able to push the water through. That's uh, one of the things that I don't understand, but everybody tells me that's the way it is. And you'll lose your pumping capacity and, and uh, loss of flows if you don't bleed off the air pockets in your, in your lines. I guess it's a little bit like a vapor lock in a carburetor type of deal. But, um, so we would not need them. It would probably be good if we had a six inch to have some strategically placed, but then we have to have an understanding of what they can draw on it. And we work this out. Uh, there's fire hydrants in the parking lot of Colonel Crawford and Jefferson Township comes in and they'll fill up if they need some water and then they record it and are to submit it to the county commissioner so we can log that water usage. They're not charged for the fire usage, but we still have to account for it. And we want to know it wasn't lost in a leak somewhere. It was actually put, as long as we can account for it, I'm okay with it. But uh, we need to be accountable for those water losses. Uh, so smaller than a six inch, uh, there'll be no fire hydrants on them, but you can put flush hydrants at that point. And you'll see that on some of the rural waters, it's uh, the glorified uh, yard hydrants, they got a, maybe an inch and a half nozzle on them. They come up and it looks like a little fire hose. 
and that's what those are. So they can create enough velocity to flush the lines out to clean them uh, periodically. So that's what we would do on something smaller because not everywhere would you want a six inch line running. You may only need a three or a four or a two. Actually a two inch line can handle 20 some people at homes uh, if you don't have to go too far. So you could, six inch would be the main artery, like 12 inches currently to even North Robinson is a 12 inch. Part way. It stops short of Parcher Road and is an eight inch the rest of the way. Okay. So, and there's, we actually have an issue with too much storage in that line and I lose my chlorine residuals. Uh, we've had to lower the elevation in the water towers and that's what a lot of people have done to try to get more turnover uh, and we're no different. We've got it a third full. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes? If we're talking um, taking the water out there we uh, in the cost of the lines to go mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Are there any grants, anything available for us to apply for in order to do that? Could we do it internally? Would we have to, uh, I believe the one that went out to uh, Colonel Crawford, out to North Robinson, a company came in and did that one, didn't they? Oh, yeah, that was a contractor. A contractor came in and yeah. did it? Okay. But now, how, how are we talking about, if you're thinking of this, so mm -hmm. in the big picture, mm -hmm. paying for it would be up to us to pay for this to go out there. I didn't say that. You didn't say that. Okay. We would, first of all, the main thing is if you're receptive to the idea, okay. then it would be up to us to try to figure out how to make that happen. That's, that's phase two, but we're not going to apply for anything or waste effort if we don't have the blessing of the city first that says, yeah, we'll let it happen, but we're not committing anything to it yet. You could, if you had the fun, you could take the charge and, and do all that. Uh, there are funds available, but they're competitive. Uh, you could do, well, actually, OPWC that you were using on other projects. So if you use it for that project, you're going to take it away from this hand. You can get loans for that. Uh, with the county system, the people are paying an assessment. Uh, on top of the 30 plus dollars a month that they pay for water usage, Basically, it's a penny a gallon to them, that's what I keep telling them. Uh, they're paying a $28 a month assessment on top of their $30 water usage, $30 to $45 water usage, to retire the debt on that water line going out to North Robinson. And it gets retired in 2019, um, so, and it was done in 96. So, but the, the people, the new customers, uh, nobody comes on as long as their well produces water. But when they're well quit, uh, they're glad to have us next door to them. And then they hooked up. We've picked up about 12 customers in the last couple of years because of issues with their own wells. Uh, and then they, they hooked up because it's cost effective compared to drilling a new well today. So, so currently, uh, we're, we're Found this 250,000 gallons for right that goes to North Robinson. Mm -hmm. Okay, our new water plant's three million gallons. Mm -hmm. We use around what is it, eight or nine hundred thousand? Mm -hmm. We use about eight or nine hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So there is capacity there mm -hmm. with the new water plant in order to be able to handle that. Right. And uh, the uh, one, one other point is I, I think we discussed this at one time. With the new plant was originally planned. Yeah, uh, we know we have a billion gallon, gallons sitting out there at Offway, and um, the uh, plan for the new plant, and they've been, uh, uh, over the construction time, they keep pointing out to me is, you know, if you want to increase the size of your plant, this wall right here just gets shoved mm -hmm. out, and we can put it, put new equipment in here in order to increase your capacity. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was something that was built into the plan. Uh, Roger insisted on that looking forward. Mm -hmm. uh, that we would have the ability to handle it if we could become a supplier of water to a uh, bigger part of the county. Yeah, we had discussed that. I was fortunate to be asked by Roger to sit on that one committee. And uh, we were wondering how big to have it. They had actually talked about bigger. But uh, 
and we brought up that a typical factory uses between five and 10 gallons per employee. So if it was 10 gallons an employee and you brought 1,000 new jobs into town, that's 10,000 gallons. So that's a 10 gallon a minute water leak, which you probably have a couple that you could find and get that capacity back. Uh, and if you had those 1,000 jobs need 1,000 new homes, that's 200,000 gallons of water a day. So you can very easily grow the system. If I was projecting, I did some projections, I know right now Nevada uses around 45,000 gallons of water a day. So Osceola would be a fraction of that. Uh, so it, it, it's not like you're putting a burden on your plant capacity or your reservoir storage. And like I said, that reservoir was used with state monies to have capacity to service the region, those were regional reservoirs uh, at that time. So it, yeah, you can very easily provide the service. It's all the other issues and you know, and we do understand that, you know, I don't particularly want to pay to have 20 miles of water line run. Uh, I'm paying for this you know, and, and I've said on that side of establishing rate structures and so forth and justifying it to the residents of the community. And uh, it, it's difficult. So you got to be fair. But uh, I think, you know, like I said, we are charging $28 a month through the county system just through a debt, a capital improvements debt. And I think you put $7.50 on my bill for a a debt and service and you know we, we understand that's necessary and it needs to be done uh, we don't have a choice and it, I don't think we can really count on grants forever they're disappearing I remember when we had federal revenue sharing and that disappeared and it created a, a burden and luckily the administration at that time didn't have it tied into a bunch of salaries it was all for buying garbage trucks and stuff like that, so it uh, didn't affect them. Like some communities, they had to lay off the people when, because they were funded, uh, their payroll by that. So. Metering. Yep. You, you mentioned about metering. Mm -hmm. That's 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 down the road then, and not so much the topic of conversation now. Mm -hmm. But I can address that pretty. The system that the county has. We are compatible, not directly. I can't take your meter reader out and do that, but we can read the meters and convert and run through your building package. It's that way, and you would want that. Uh, we have all radio reads in the county, and, and if you're going out in the county, that's what you want. You're not walking to those places, and you're not pulling into driveways and parking. We went from over seven and a half hours it would take to read to less than an hour now. Uh, and actually, the capabilities are there today that with a tower you could have the ladies in the office read all the, all the meters and some of them have a system set up where they come in and your meters with the new digital meters will tell you if there's a, a leak in the system so it could actually if they hit the go button at eight o'clock and it'll ping a couple and you'll have some red alarms go off you can actually call those people and say, hey, check if you've got a water leak or something. Uh, there, or was there something going on, you know? Uh, high usage, did you fill up your pool or, or something like that? And that capability is there. Uh, there's companies that have that, I know, do mobile home parks. And they're in Springfield and they're reading parks all over the place. They got a modem that ties into a tower at remote locations and they just call up and read them. Yeah, so you can you can cut, you know, that, make that as efficient as possible, and that's what we did with the county. We switched all the meters over, got them all the radio reads, got them all accurate, upgraded, all the commercial meters. Our line losses went down 10% in the system because of the accurate readings. And then now we have two part-time people overseeing the operations for the commissioners, and it's easy to grow it but I wanted to present this because you guys are set up for it and we don't necessarily need to hire a crew and a backhoe and build a building and so forth.
to do that. Uh, another question about the tower. Would we have to add more towers? At this point, going west, I say no, because it's all downhill. <laughs> there is, uh, what was it, 100 foot or better fall going if you went all the way to Nevada. The creeks and all go west into Wyandotte County. So that's to your advantage, and I do not anticipate the need for that six inch and 100,000 gallons being used west. I think you can supply it right off your own towers. Um, you won't go, the, the biggest issue that you have is the Continental Divide going through the city. And there is a treaty with the Canadian government in the U.S. on no net loss of water to the Great Lakes. So if you have, we really wouldn't go too far south. I mean, I don't think you'd go to the net with water because you're pulling some dusty water and putting it into the high water. Unless you get a permission slip from the director of the Department of Natural Resources. Crestline has such a permit. And in their case, their water system, their well is in Ontario, south of, east of 314, south of the old Lincoln Highway. And then they pump, that's in the, well, I'm going to say a high river watershed. Uh, and they pump it over the hill from the good well field they got there to their plant, which is on the, the north side of the old Lincoln Highway. And then they pump it all the way back to Crestline. And we have right now, Crestline and Galleon got together because Galleon's actually goes to the Olentangy and Crestline City is in the Sadusky River. But we have their two water systems interconnected with a valve such that if there was a disaster at either one's plant, we could, you know, they could shut their plant down and open the valve and the other municipality could feed it water. So we have that, so no gallon jugs on the square with a tanker truck. Yeah. <laughs> this town had that once. So. But you, did, you just have to address those. But I, I can't believe anybody would be too upset with it. Bill? Lynn, um, i got several questions. Have there been any studies done where you want to run us the number of customers that may take advantage of it? Not yet, because we don't know if we can do it. I have personally went to all the surrounding township trustees meetings and let them know that there would be discussions on this and that there may be letters sent to their residents and I wanted them to hear it from me first uh, before the residents called them. But other than my personal conversations with some, I have no numbers because we didn't want to waste the effort if we couldn't do it. About projected hookup fees? All to be determined. Because I remember years ago they wanted to run it out to sulfur. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was 1200 bucks back then. Mm -hmm. And people would have had We cannot mandate that they hook up to water. And I think that was a fallacy of some of that that they were telling them they had to. And for $1,200, personally, that's cheap. You will pay several thousand dollars that's to drill. in other communities, rural water. I've had to pay up to $17,000 for a two-inch tap, not me and my client. Uh, I have seen my client pay a $40,000 connection fee to another community uh, for a mobile home home. Licking County charged a million dollars to connect to a sanitary sewer. I just sort of yeah. have to sit here and think that we're, mm -hmm. yeah, we're, we're going to rent the mayor, we're going to rent the sulfur, we're going to do this and that. Well, some people be paying for it, mm -hmm. and so that's going to be us. So. I'm not saying that, that at all. You don't have to do that. But if you aren't willing to at least consider it where we know that if we can make step two, three, and four happen, then we're not going out there if we don't have water first. So that, that's where I'm coming from on our end, that it takes a lot of effort and it'll take a few years to make something happen, but it starts here. And you have the big body of water and we're asking, would you let that go out that way? And then we can look at alternatives
to making it happen. Uh, and I don't, we're not spending a million dollars running a water line somewhere for two customers. That mm -hmm. won't happen. I mean, that's, that can't happen. So you need that initial sign up to make it doable. Do they have their water system now? Pardon me? Vader. Oh yeah, I just throw that, I've, I've approached them, I used to run their water system, and uh, it's 20 years, and I did go to them and told them we, would, we were discussing it, because they're going to have to do some upgrades, and, and they might not even want it. I know we've talked with the commissioners of Osceola needing it. They have several dug wells in that village, and those are basically not acceptable today. And But there's no alternative for them really yet. And we're looking at getting septic systems in there because the EPA was on, they were on the radar, and so we've gotten 300,000 and another 93,000 to put new septic systems in for the people of Nevada. I mean, Osceola, excuse me. But I'm thinking in short term, the smaller, uh, I know we have a customer west of Winford that, that wants water. Uh, I know you've got uh, half a dozen or so customers at Mount Zion Road that want water immediately now uh, because I've talked to them when I was discussing the county system. But like I said, I don't want to put water meters and master meters and all that everywhere. And I, I thought it would be better if basically each of our cities stake out their turf, so to speak, and what they could efficiently service and are willing to service and commit to. And then we go from there. Well, it would be definitely one way to grow the economy of the city of Cyrus. Which way, I'm sorry, which way on Mount Zion, west or east? Well, down to Mount Zion, Route 4. Oh. And then you could go some to the west, some to the east. You could actually end up looping around, pick the homes up on 98. You could go over and tie to Webstone Street and into that last, you know, those dead ends. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got uh, coming off of uh, Beale Avenue and Hopley. Uh, you've got a bunch of homes between there and one where 100 goes south. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I said, it, it's a slow, long-term process, and you've got to find a way to afford it to make it happen before it gets put in the ground. It's not you build it, they will come, but uh, you know it's just something to consider. But one way to make that happen is also to reduce that size of the pipe to domestic consumption standards and not the fire standards. And I, I don't want to have the fire chief upset. What we typically try to do now He's when we're doing this. He's sitting on your this, shoulder. Oh, <laughs> okay. I felt a knife. <laughs> the, uh, is in other communities, we sit with the fire chief, the water department, the administration, the finance, to explain all sides and what do you have to have, what do you need to do this, and then so everybody's on the same page, and we don't want people out there, well, I could have done this, but they went this route, and understand the whole process. So. How many years would, how many years do you think it would take before we could get, about two years before we could get any actual project started, if, if we go that way? I would say that's realistic, Mark. Uh, it, based on the funding uh, that's used, uh, sometimes some of these projects take four years, five years. Uh, you can typically get loan money tomorrow uh, for projects if they're ready to go, but you got to pay it back. And until you have that avenue to pay it back figured out, you don't go borrow. So does the fire department set in on uh, the size of the water lines that does the insurance companies come in to play when you reduce the size down from a six inch to a four inch or a two inch? I mean, is is the fire chief then the integral part on when it comes to values of homes and, and all? Inside the city limits where you provide the full-time fire protection, uh, 
it, you got your ISO ratings. I know that the better, the bigger the pipes and the bigger the trucks and the more manpower you have, the better those numbers are, the ISO numbers. I still haven't seen, nobody would ever give me a number as to what percentage that saves me on my home insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I really don't know that. But if we go outside the city limits where it's already serviced by volunteer fire departments, it will be no change on their insurance. And actually the values of the home typically would go up because of the water being available. Any other questions? I think I have a question, probably not for Lynn, but uh, it's on the on the water lines, and Jeff probably knows because I asked him earlier about it. So if we, were, I guess what I'm thinking is, we're so if we want to supply people outside the city limits. We've got people in the city limits that still want water, Jeff. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> well, yeah, and that's one of the reasons this is, has came about because. We have a couple of different requests. I mean, we got New Cyrus Tire, and we now are under the railroad tracks on 98, and we're with the hydro right there. Well, we got four or five people that would like to tie in, and, and he might have another potential business that wants to buy some land off of him, and they'll want water. So, according to right now, inside the city limits, they're all required to partake in putting that water line in and paying for it, and then paying for the tax. And then we have another request outside the city limits that would like a water line. So I don't know how much parameters we have outside the city limits, and they don't need the hydrants, but there has to come a point in time where we're going to have to invest a little bit of our time and labor and money to get more customers. So I guess the question is, is it, is it always going to fall on, according to these ordinances, always on the people that want it and got to pay for it? It's for discussion, I guess. So right now, if Cyrus Tire wants water, then he's responsible to pay from the hydrant all the way to the edge of his property line. That's a pretty good investment for one person. And, and, and it's the far edge of his property. Right. It's not just to the edge, it's right. to the far, far edge. Right. At the edge of his property line. So that, you know, that's going to restrict some people to say, well, I can't afford to do that. Now, can we afford to do it? Probably not, but like Lynn said, we've got to increase our customer base somehow, some way. So I, I think it's discussion we need to have and try to put a plan together. How do we do that financially and affordably? Any other questions? Is there someone that could go through this uh, proposed changes that are in, that are being proposed in the ordinance that what bearing and, and walk us through it? Yeah, yeah um, I, I guess I can do that. I, I it didn't, I were helped in the drafting of this. But then real quick on the, uh, on the eight inch line requirement, mm -hmm. where does that come from? Does that come from the, the fire code thing that requires the eight inch for the hydrants? Or is that somewhere else? That was a city ordinance. And you're not alone in that. The captain's got it in theirs too. But that's where I'm saying it was deemed at that time we needed all 8s and 12s. And we had a bunch of spaghetti lines, I'll call them, at that period of time. But in, we have done some analysis. And in the residential subdivisions, uh, a 6-inch line, in my opinion, is OK. But I guess my question, yeah. though, is it, the only place I find that it requires the 8-inch line is in the fire code section that says to tie into a hydrant and yeah. have to make 8-inch line. Right. If it's a hydrant, if you have a hydrant, you have to service it with an 8-inch line. So you, you could run 4-inch, 3-inch, 2-inch, 6-inch anywhere else without putting a fire hydrant on it. Okay. But, so I guess the question is, what, where... If, if a no hydrant is going to be in, used, is there something still that requires it to be an 8 inch line? Not to my knowledge. Okay, because that was what was confusing me. Okay. All right. 
Sorry. Back to you. No, I uh, you're fine. Uh, yeah, we, we kind of went through and we made some some revisions in here. The fact that here that has the red. Yeah, this this is um, I there's two packages in front of you and I gave you uh, all the pertinent sections of, uh, of chapter nine that apply to, to water lines in the 913, 914, and 951. Um, and then chapter nine follows all of our different service things. 914 uh, is the extension procedures that are currently in place and it essentially assesses the cost to the property owner. It does have a provision uh, in subsection E for the property owner that incurs those costs or developer or whoever that incurs those costs to recover some of those costs from other people that may tie in over a period of 10 years, but it gets all complicated. What it prohibits the city from doing, however, is running some lines at its cost to get closer or to make it more available for people to expand into. If there's a neighborhood of, as Lois saying, a single business or maybe a neighborhood of 10 or 12 or 15 homes, but it's kind of far away away, the city, the city can't bear any of that cost up front. It's gotta be paid up front by the property owner. So what, what we did in here was, was made a couple of the changes. Um, there are two things that's not in red that need to be changed in there, but basically in 914.01a, uh, we added some language to the end. Um, the statute already allowed for the city to incur the cost and, and burden of doing some extensions if the city believed that it was necessary for water circulation or fire protection or to maintain service to a city-owned property. We just simply added in, and the word for is missing between necessary and potential, or are necessary for potential expansion of city services. So if the city would determine that uh, potential for expansion of city services, would warrant building some line, it has that, that leeway in it. Uh, in B1 below, there is the eight inch word there, um, and we could change that to six. I, I defer to Lynn if he thinks that it should be eight or six. Uh, essentially what B1 is, is saying there is if a developer runs a line, and if the city requires that developer because at our determination, we believe that line has to be bigger than eight inches, then we'll bear the, the burden of the cost between the six or eight and whatever we, we are requiring. If we wanted, we could reduce that to six. Um, B2 is, and that is for lines within the city. Uh, B2 is, um, we, we've done some, some that's when we've done most of the modification. Again, it did originally have the eight inch language in it and we, we changed that um, to basically indicate that the required line would be based on what the developer and the city engineer determine is the necessary uh, size line. So uh, the, the new language reads that, uh, that if the city is going to require a line bigger than what the developer and the engineer determined is necessary for their service, then we would bear the difference of that. Now, the example here would be if a user a hundred, couple hundred yards down the road, just for him wants a two inch line, and that's all he needs, and the engineer determined all he needs is a two inch line. But from a city, we look at it, well, 100 yards past them is a whole subdivision, so we want you to run a six inch line, we would bear the cost between the difference of the two inch line, which is all that's necessary for his project, excuse me, and the six inch line that we're requiring because we're eyeballing what's on the other side of his development. And, and I think that's, you know, relatively reasonable. Um, cost, I'm sorry. But somebody like Lynn with the theory that wanted to be determining even though he only, even though this individual only needs a two-inch line, Lynn's recommendation would override the two-inch. Our, 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 yeah, whoever our city engineer is and what they tell us we would need, yeah, so if the developer just wants the two-inch line, we, then we mandate the six. It really 
So we wouldn't, we wouldn't be bearing the brunt then. We, if, only if the it, difference. Only the, only the difference between what six. we want and what the developer wants. Right. Okay. Right. Um, uh, F, sub, subsection F, um, the entire cost of the installation, cost of fire hydrants, and all that material. Uh, under the language currently, is that the owner or developer requesting it bears all the costs. Um, and again, so kind of matched with that so B2 above, except where it is determined by the city that the water main or extensions are essential to provide adequate water circulation or fire protection. Because if we have a, a big long dead end, we may want to do some things like a hydrant or a flush hydrant, as Lynn was saying. Uh, or are necessary to provide water service to city property, which again, that just the language that's already in there, but we're repeating it here in the cost section, or are necessary for the potential expansion of the city services. So for example, somebody wants it 100 meters down the road, but we want to kind of get a little bit closer because we, you know, we're eyeballing something else. It allows us to go ahead and incur some of that cost. And then the last one uh, uh, was, uh, oh, recognition there. Any extensions beyond adjoining townships that would come back to this body to, to get approval to, to do that. Um, the other thing that we did to make no changes to, uh, but Mr. O'Rourke had uh, asked questions about, and I was just kind of looking at it. It looks like that most of these prices are maybe a decade, a decade and a half old. Um, and these are our fees for water tapping, um, for tapping into lines. Uh, as Mr. McKeever indicated, we may be on the low end on some of these. Um, that may be something that at a different point in time we want to come back and, and, and see, get some estimates as to what, what real costs are in, in other jurisdictions. Not really related to what's here, but as Mr. Rourke expressed concern about us incurring costs and not being able to recoup them, this would be a place to be able to recoup those. Um, lastly, uh, again, not red line because we, we hadn't really come up with a solution. Uh, but one of the things that Mr. McKeever pointed out was one of the things that is a burden on extending our water service sometimes is uh, our ordinance section 95101, which mandates um, annexation to the city if you accept city services. Um, there is no, the only exception to that is whether or not Council and administration don't vote to terminate service. service. Um, Mr. McKeever indicated maybe that uh, uh, some sort of option on that, uh, a way to opt out of that, or um, limitations on that, or, or something else. Uh, again, not directly relevant to the ability to do this today, but something that uh, long term. Uh, needs to maybe be looked at to, to give just more flexibility. Um, as Mr. McKeever's pointing out, Osceola and Sulphur Springs, if they did want water, I'm pretty sure they probably don't want the annex to, to, to get it, so. Dan. Oh, I mean, this with the annexation, I, I'm going back to, well, I've been preaching this for years, of, you know. <laughs> if you're, you're going to use our water, you know, yeah, obviously not Osceola, but if you're up against Cyrus and you want water, then one way to get it is to come on board. But, uh, you know, so I wouldn't be in favor of, I mean, not annexing Osceola, something like that, but if uh, the guy down the road here, three feet out of town, wants water, then he needs to annex. So. That's just my opinion. I guess it would be up to council to decide that. Well, should it be for just water, or should we make them annex if they're getting water and sewer? I mean, how many people are using our water but didn't have a septic system? Well, it, it, and that's that is a potential option for you. That that may be uh, a, a low low burden uh, right. to, to to neighboring communities uh, or neighboring entities. Yeah. There, there's there's right. some easy fixes, and, and then there's some there's some harder fixes, and that's easy. Right, because we're not going to run sewer lines five miles up unless they pay you really well to do it. So there's your right no reason. Typically, you would have a pump station out there and plug it back. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's what we did. I mean, we're pumping 
five miles, eight miles. New Regal pumps to Fostoria, uh, for instance, right now, several miles. Right, but I'm just guessing that water lines a little more cost effective than sewer. Actually, the force main on here is a six inch. It's the same water line material as what well, if you were running that size. Four to six inch force mains, typical. Um, you know, that's going to cost you the same as putting in on that same size water line. You get a $200,000 pump station to push it. <laughs> right. So we're going by and going ahead and asking for a vote on these additional lines in, the, in these three different sections. Will that help get the ball rolling? Yeah, I think that solves all the immediate requests uh, that, that, that uh, Mr. McKeever is dealing with, as well as some of the potentialities. Um, the things that are in the uh, canonization section, essentially it, it, where it assesses cost in, in that section A1, essentially refers back to the conditions and, oh no, I guess, I guess this one is going down. Or something that we, we deal with um, uh, down, down the road uh, because um, some of this is out of date already, like A1 uh, refers to cost being born as according to section 91305. Uh, 91305 was repealed in 2002. So it's, it's already out of date with some other things. So the the annexation section, 951 is something you probably want to re review at a, a, a subsequent time, fix some of those things, maybe make it so it specifies water and sewer as opposed to the more broader utility. And, um, well, we might want to bring in different sections back to committee yeah. for further discussion. This is the first time anybody's heard any of this, and uh, I think that if we if we set up uh, how we want to approach this and bring it to, to, the, to your committee and do it a section by section that we, get, we can get through it and uh, give everybody an opportunity to think about it for a little bit. Yes. Rob, uh, just to say we have interest is one thing, but just say Lane goes out and he's going to do some studies and see where, what the actual interest for the people is, is another. Just to say we have an interest doesn't say we're going to do it. Well, that's correct, except I believe there are two, there's a couple of immediate requests. One is our, within city limits, as he was saying, which would uh, directly impact out of city residents that are essentially across the street. And two is a request for an extension that's currently pending for a business location west of town. So there are, there are two pending requests, and, and this is kind of well, um, giving the flexibility to kind of get those things done. But if we bring that up at the next committee meeting for those changes, we could, I mean, it's going to take us another, what, two weeks to get to that point. Yeah, I, these, these, are, these are kind of short-term changes. There's still a couple other things that are more longer term that you got to, that we'll have to come back on and bring back the annexation section. The... Um, uh, the tapping fees and the uh, the fire code stuff, which we, we obviously want to get uh, input from from fire, but where it currently requires the eight inch lines for for hydrants. Um, there may be some space, places where you want an eight inch line, I, like industrial parks and other yeah, residential areas where six yeah. might be fine. So those are those are three things that definitely have to come back. Um, this is something that you know is is here, do or not. You know. What would the committee say of, of going ahead and, and doing these proposed changes that are presented to us at the present time? I don't have any objections. I don't have any objections. I mean, the what's in the red. Right. right. With, with one with one correction, I did um, note in. B1, where it says eight, um, that, that that could be at six, but I'll defer to Lynn on that. Should it stay at eight now and then later? If 
we're in agreement, then that can be changed. Maybe. You know, you haven't decided I'm just up here telling you and you're trusting me. You gotta do the due diligence. So um, that, that, would yeah. stay, that would stay at eight for now, so yeah. there would be no, only the changes in red. It said, yeah, it says within the municipality. Yeah. So right. Why would we want to change it? Well, only if you agree that you don't need the eight, a six would be adequate, and that's where you need the discussion with your water treatment people and the fire to make sure they both agree that it has advantages that you don't need a big eight, an eight inch line doing a thousand gallons a minute when you're fighting a house fire with 250 gallons a minute. It would, it would almost be more or less as a, as a zoning requirement that if the a zone's gonna be industrial, it's if you're gonna want it to have this larger size, but if it's only gonna be residential, we can require only the, the smaller size in the residential area. And this, and this is just about uh, apportioning costs Anyways, it's, yeah, right. it's not even structural, and, and, so we can leave it at eight. And, and inside the city limits, limit. you're still going to want fire hydrants. Right, and that's what I'm not saying. It says within to put the, the fire hydrants inside right. the city. Right. We'll put it there. So there be no, there would be no other recommended changes other than what's in red. Okay. And that's on both pages. There's a right. change on the second page too. You do have two-inch lines that you're installing in this community inside your city limits now but their fire protection is provided from the other ends of the, the, ends of the street. Nora is a two inch water line that they fit now. But that's all that's there today and that's all that's needed and the fire hydrant sits on Rogers and E Street, so. All right, come here. I'll make a motion to uh, accept these changes. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, I would like to go ahead and. We'll put together the legislation then for the next meeting. Yes. For this, okay. We we'll make sure you sign that before you leave this evening. Yes. Okay. And. I would like to go ahead and recess the service committee at 657. All finance board at 657. Hopefully the only item on the agenda is the audit, annual audit by Parity Associates, Associates, which was passed out to the for review. Have they reviewed it? I reviewed it. It's still sitting on the table. I did not bring it with you. You want to look at mine? I didn't. It wasn't doing anything like that. I was still there. No, it's like a repeat of last year. I mean, there's no findings. There's no, you know, we got our usual recommendations in the management letter. So mainly, we, uh, Perry and Associates want to know if we want to have a post art conference or not. That's up to you guys. And I can get the paperwork signed and sent back to them. Anybody want to post audit conference with the uh, very associate? Dan, you said yes. <laughs> What's that? He <laughs> said Dan, did you say yes? yes. 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 I'll make that motion. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. To have one or to not have one? not have one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is going to be the Got you. This would be a recommendation to full council, then full council will vote on it also.
we got a bill from Spectrum and Time Warner that um, wasn't anticipated. So the guy I'm dealing with, the DT, is actually on vacation this week. So he's supposed to be back in Monday. So I have you know, two appropriations that we'll need, but they can probably wait until we know what's going on with the rest of this. So I'll just say we'll cable that for now instead of doing legislation for this then how to come back for more. I think we can get by on one more bill in these two places. Okay, nothing further but recess at 7 o'clock. Any public participation? We have a motion to join the joint regular committee. Sorry. Ms. Sack, second by Mr. Keeler. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn at 7 o'clock. Thanks for all your input. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Okay, we are, we, we have to have a special council meeting. It's called for 6.30. We're running a little bit late, and we'll make a note that it uh, actually began at 7.01 p.m., okay? Okay, I call it uh, order the special meeting for Bissarra City Council for July the 20th, 2017. The meeting was called uh, by Mayor Reeser, and it is to, um, uh, I gotta find it here, <laughs> go and have an executive session uh, regarding 121.22 G1, which is personnel. Uh, meeting is called to order. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. McKeever? Here. Ross? Here. Fireball? Here. Trufa? Here. Senate? Here. O'Rourke? Here. Piper? Here. We need to appoint Kelly Tuttle as our interim clerk for this meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Piper, second by Mr. Truca to appoint Kelly Tuttle as the interim clerk for the meeting. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. This is where we grant permission for visitors to speak. Does anyone want to address council this evening? No one? Okay. Mr. Atlas. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to request an executive session of the City Council for the purpose of considering personnel matters for Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22, subsection G1. Do I hear a motion? I move at this time that City Council adjourns an executive session with all available elected officers of the Sire City Administration and the Service Safety Director available. For the purpose of conducting a conference with Law Director Rob Ratliff for the City of Bessars for High Revised Code personnel. Consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official, or to consider the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual, unless the employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual requests a public hearing for High Revised Code Section 121.22G1. Okay, I have a motion that, that at this time the City Council adjourns into executive session with all available elected officers of the Bissara City Administration and the Service Safety Director available for the purpose of conducting a conference with Law Director Rob Ratliff from the City of Bissara for Ohio Revised Code personnel to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official, or to consider the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual, unless the employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual requests a public hearing per Ohio Revised Code, Section 121.22 G1. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote. O'Rourke? Yes. McKeever? Yes. Ross? Yes. Wirebuck? Yes. Truca? Yes. Sack? Yes. Piper? Yes. Okay, motion carried. 
uh, no formal uh, action or vote may be taken in an executive session. Only discussion of the subject uh, with the executive session was called for. So we need to enter our uh, executive session at 7.04 p.m. And we're going to have to ask everyone to leave, please. Please remove all of your recording equipment from the room. We got everybody back in here. Um, I need a motion to adjourn the executive session. Yes. Roll call vote, please. The keeper? Yes. Award? Yes. Piper? Yes. Ross? Yes. Wireball? Yes. Trooper? Yes. Sack? Yes. Okay, the motion carried. We adjourn the executive session at uh, 740 p.m. There is no report out of the report to be given at this time, so we'll continue with our regular meeting. Um, is there any old business anyone would like to bring up this evening? Any new business anyone would like to bring up this evening? Yeah, don't forget about the Monday at 4.30. Monday at 4.30 we have the, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> don't forget about it, right. 4.30 for the uh, well, see, public hearing. Uh, right. Public hearing for the downtown uh, sidewalk usage. Okay. We're all here this evening. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Truca, second by Mr. McKeever to adjourn. We are adjourned at um, uh, 7.41 p.m. Thank you. Has everybody signed their paperwork for registration yes, I did. Okay. I don't want to have to change it out.